laying in the shop for a little bit. Still, lots of snow. Lots more snow. Another 8, 10, 12 inches, something like that. Probably not 12, probably about 10 or 11 over the night. So, enough that my wife decided to work from home today. Anyway, just released a Flea Bay Edition video and a couple things on there that I thought I would follow up on because I have both of these parts that they're selling. The first one was the little 4-inch Atlas 4-jaw chuck that they wanted. They were starting bidding at 150 or a buy it now, 250 and I don't know, they wanted shipping on top of that. Anyway, I've said all along I don't think those small Atlas chucks are worth that much money. Now, the chuck in the video was branded Atlas and it was stamped made in England. Or I think it was England is what, they, what was stamped on that. Um, and I've seen several of those that are... Um, badged made in England. So a lot of that stuff that Atlas and Craftsman did early on, you know, some of the Sears dial, dial indicators or Craftsman dial indicators, things like that were made on, made in uh, in Europe or in the, the UK and in England, wherever the case may be. But anyway, the chuck, I pointed out that it was kind of unique to me because I had not seen one with the um, integral threads into the, you know, a direct mount chuck. So anyway, this is the chuck that I have and this is a four inch chuck and the reason I think it's important to show this is to kind of put perspective in we we show the four inch chuck as the standard on the Atlas six inch but um, sometimes we think maybe we can use it for other applications and everything and that is actually true I've actually built a backing plate for this so I can mount it on my Sheldon and I have run it on the Sheldon lathe for a few different things. It's primarily now going to get used on things like rotary tables. I've cast some mounts or made some patterns to cast some mounts just to be able to, to mount it in this orientation on the Atlas milling machine, for example, or even on the Atlas shaper, whatever the case may be. So it's got other applications for me other than that, but to put it in perspective, that's how small it is. You know, it's granted it's a four inch chuck, it's advertised as a four inch chuck. Um, the difference between this one and that one that was on on flea bay there was this has been drilled it does not have a direct mount so on the back it's there and I said they were the same this one actually is a little bit different because this has got bosses cast into the cast iron whereas the one that had the integral threads in it was uh, more hollow in here it didn't have a boss left there for the for the um, mounting screws to go through so anyway, that's what the chuck is it's a pretty simple little chuck you know I think in no way is that worth $250. I really don't even think it's a $150 chuck. You know, I think if you can pick these up for $80 or $100, maybe you're getting a useful accessory, but um, I wouldn't be spending too much more than that for that. When you, uh, when you look at these, there again, I always look at stuff as how easily can it be reproduced or is it worth a, a shop project to do in the shop. This is a pretty simple setup here, realistically. You know, it's cast iron. This could be made out of steel. You could build a, a steel body chuck would serve just as well for the home shop use. Um, it's got Acme threads inside, but that's not a real major, major thing in and of itself. And the jaws look to be a jaw that's probably been case hardened is kind of the way they look. So nothing real difficult here. This could be a could be a fun little shop project. So we may set that on the back burner and, and take a look at it. So give me your thoughts on that. So that was the one thing I thought was worth talking about. The other thing was the safety guards. And you see those safety guards occasionally. You know, I said I thought I had a set. The set that I have is for the horizontal countershaft machine. So it doesn't fit on here. I bought them originally when I was buying up some guards for reproduction stuff. I'm not sure these are anything that I will ever reproduce, although I may, you know, I may put that on the back burner and that may be something that I do if I come to a point where I have nothing else to do. But anyway, the ones that the ones that are shown in the, the little flea bay video is um, this one right here. And they're for the horizontal, yes, they're for the horizontal counter shaft. The difference between them, the difference in the numbers between them is the 10F720, which is this one, and the upper guard, or the, the um, headstock guard, we'll call it, is this one. Um, these, are, these are stamped 10F-720. Um, now, I don't find a number at all in, the, in this guard itself, although it's got some paint buildup and stuff, so it may be there. So, and the vertical counter shaft is just badge 10-720. That's the only difference. Now, the, um, the way they sit in my 
lathe is here in the background. I don't know if it's, we're going to have a good enough view with us sitting here. So anyway, this guard would mount right back here like this. This would encapsulate your motor, and the upper would encapsulate your countershaft assembly. And I said that it didn't have the back portion to it. This is the back, this is most of the back portion. This one's broken off here too. So it's not a 100% um, complete guard, and I don't know, I'd have to look at that to see how it's going to mount. The other one had just a little cutboard hook on it. This was pretty much the hook that they um, show in all of the catalogs and all the pictures I've seen. So this was probably just a little bit of a spring steel and it probably just snapped on there. So anyway, that would mount on the for the horizontal counter shaft just like that. And then the upper guard and then the upper guard would mount. So this would mount where your standard guard would right there. And this would encapsulate the back end of it and your, your horizontal counter shaft or the uh, counter shaft assembly on the horizontal and then you'd have access to it here. Now they say you have access to all of the all of the um, belt changes and everything are readily available and I guess that is true. But I said they were kind of clumsy. The vertical counter shaft I believe, and I could be mistaken, but I believe it's the same guard but it's cut out in this area from looking at the pictures to clear the um, to clear this cover back here. So I think that's the difference in the horizontal and vertical counter shafts for this assembly. The front cover for the vertical counter shaft uh, it runs up here and it's a vented cover and goes up just like that. Um, and that's just looking at them from the pictures. So if I run across one of those, why I'll uh, grab some pictures of it. But I have not uh, I've not seen one for several years. I don't think so. Anyway, it's an interesting accessory. You don't see a whole lot of them around. Um, in this day and age in your home shop, I guess if you've got your kids out there learning on them and everything, it could be an advantage, but um, it's kind of a unique set of pieces for them. So anyway, I just wanted to cover those. I'm working on patterns again today. So anyway, I wanted to cover those. Hopefully you find that a little bit informative. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.